Hi, Jenny Stone here from HR Shield with your HR Rescue. Each day we get hundreds of questions from our clients and other small and mid-sized business owners about some of the most common HR issues. We figured if they have those questions, you might too. So let's provide a lifeline and share our answers to some of the most common scenarios. Poor records management can cost an organization in two primary ways. Failure to keep required records can result in fines or other punishments from the government. And failure to retain records of an investigation, claim, or complaint can doom a case. Accordingly, most companies have detailed documentation retention policies and schedules that should be followed carefully. In determining proper record-keeping procedures, the following considerations should be addressed. What to keep and for how long? What needs to be kept confidential? Where to store records? And how to destroy the documents that are no longer needed to be kept? Whenever in question, the best practice is to ask counsel before destroying any document, especially if it is regarding a continuous employment decision that may lead to litigation. Step one. Make a records inventory. A record is something that an employer needs to keep for a set period of time, either for regulatory, legal, or business reasons. As a first step, it is necessary for an employer to classify what types of documents it has. The easiest way is to create a records inventory. The records inventory should list the types of documents, the location of the documents, and the volume of each type of document the organization has. An inventory will help the employer keep track of records and be able to locate and manage them. The inventory should include both active documents and ones that are no longer being used, but still need to be retained under law. Step two, manage personnel files. Employee personnel files must be current and complete. The types of documents that need to be in the personnel file are those relating to employment decisions, payroll, benefits, training, and performance. Information that may be requested as part of an external investigation, such as I-9 records, health and safety documents, and payroll records should be maintained in a separate file that is easily accessible if needed. This will allow for easy retrieval and discrete handling of confidential or private information. As a best practice, I-9 records should be accessible only to HR professionals and be kept in a single separate file. Certain employee documents should never be kept in the personnel file medical records, genetic information, and investigation records, including polygraphs. These records must be kept in separate files. Documents contained in the employee's personnel file should be reviewed periodically and at least annually to ensure that everything is current, accurate, and complete. While an employer should include all the documents required by law, an employer must refrain from including everything in the personnel file unnecessary or unsubstantiated references or criticisms to an employee's private life, political beliefs, race, sex, or religion must be avoided. A good rule of thumb, if an employer would not want a jury to see or hear it, then an employer should not include it. Many states have statutory requirements that permit employees to review the contents of their personnel files. To comply with these statutes, employers should have policies or practices that allow the organization to easily locate personnel files in response to a request from the employee or an employee representative who is legally permitted to request such files, which should conform to applicable state laws. Step three, make a record schedule. Different laws have different requirements for how long a document must be retained. Federal laws require a minimum number of years that a record must be retained, starting from either the date the record is made or a personnel action is taken, whichever is later. In many instances, if a claim or lawsuit has been filed, all relevant records should be kept until the final disposition of the charge or lawsuit. Employers should make records schedule based on a guide such, an employee, such as an employee records retention chart. Step four, storing documents. When reviewing how long to retain records, employers should also consider the storage format of the records. Employers should consider whether hard copies will be kept on site or at a remote location. Documents maintained electronically may not be easily retrievable either because the storage media has deteriorated or become obsolete or because the information was generated using a format that is no longer readable. Thus, recovery of documents may prove to be impossible 
or exceedingly expensive. Employers should maintain information subject to federal laws, such as I-9 records, health and safety documents, and payroll records in a convenient location for easy retrieval. Step five, when destroying employment-related files, employers should shred or dispose of records in an irretrievable manner, including documents collected as part of an employee background check. Employers should dispose of documents containing individual identifiers, such as social security numbers or bank account information in a secure manner. Employers should create written logs identifying what information was destroyed and when, including when electronically stored information was destroyed. Step six, keep certain information confidential. Confidentiality of employee records is necessary to avoid potential liabilities from impermissible access or use of the information in employee files. Employers should not only consider what employment records are being kept, but also whether certain records should be kept in separate files or maintained on a strict need-to-know basis. Certain federal statutes, including the ADA, FMLA, OSHA, IRCA, and GINA, require that information protected by these laws may not be disclosed generally throughout the workplace or used for reasons other than the reason the information was provided by the employee. Therefore, employers should maintain confidential information about employees, including medical information and I-9 documentation in files that are separate from the ordinary personnel files. Employers may face potential liability from former employees including possible claims of defamation, retaliation, or interference with prospective employment opportunities if more extensive information about an employee was disclosed to a third party without the employee's consent. Employers should develop consistent policies and practices for responding to third party requests for information about employees, such as reference checks, requests from lenders, or subpoenas. Such procedures must include, for example, a requirement that the employee must authorize in writing the disclosure of the information about an employee that is more extensive than the dates worked and job titles. Even when the disclosure of the information is allowed or has been authorized by an employee, the employer should take care to limit the information disclosed to only that which is responsive to the request. Step seven, minimize potential liability. Employers should retain and preserve employee records, including electronic records such as emails at the earliest possible opportunity, possibly even before a lawsuit is filed. A court may find that an employer has an obligation to identify, locate, and preserve relevant records as soon as the employer should have reasonably understood that it will face litigation. When a charge is filed with an agency, such as the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, EEOC, the employer is required to maintain a record relating to the issues raised in the charge until the matter has been resolved. Have an HR question you'd like answered? Leave your topic idea in the comments section below. And as always, thank you for watching and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and you can always email us for more information at support at hr-shield.com.